Hello, this is John Spielman with my video version of my latest column, uh, my New Year column at the beginning of 2022. I'm just going to check now that we are recording, and we are. And this was a column, of course, you're supposed to, on New Year columns, to look forwards and backwards. Uh, I've done much more of the latter. Um, I said that 2022, there was a lot of internet chess, as of course there was, because there was so much COVID. And I also said, um, I don't know if this is unfair, but that although they're terrific to watch these matches, um, match tournaments and tournaments on the internet, I, they do blend into each other for me. And I wonder if they even do for the players, because they're probably sitting at the same desks playing against the same opponents in different competitions. So you sort of think, which one did I play him in? And you wouldn't have any geography. You wouldn't think of if you played somebody, say, in the playing hall at Hastings that I did years ago, you know, underneath the pantomime or something, then at least you'd have some geographical memory of where you'd been. But here you're just in the same place, just at different times. Anyway, um, they were rather wonderful. <laughs> some of these tournaments, of course, Magnus Carlsen won the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour, his, his tour. And I talked about the tournaments he'd played in. Said, of course, the important thing is the World Championship. I'm not sure if I did, but it obviously it was. And that the other man of the moment is Ali Reja Firuja, because he, um, well, he won the Grand Swiss in Riga, and he then got a lot of rating points in the European Club Cup as well, a European Championship, not Club Cup, uh, National Championship. And there's this thing that Carson has said he'll only defend his title against Ferruja. And of course we shall see because it's all very splendid saying that. But he, Carson has um, a, an empire, a business empire, which I rather imagine that the boys wouldn't be very pleased if he um, didn't defend his title. That's my feeling. And um, also, I mean, I think, you know, it's h very hard. He's been world champion, and although it's a faggot just afterwards when he's done all that work, um, I think, you know, giving it up would be a bit much for him as well. Anyway, I gave his game... Of course, the rapid play and blitz took place in Warsaw. I started while the rapid play was still going, <coughs> and I finished, excuse me, when the blitz had finished as well, when MVL had won the blitz. And, of course, Carlsen didn't win the rapid play, basically, because he pushed his luck against um, Abdusatorov and Nadir Bek uh, Abdusatorov. And um, in this position, he could just have played Queen H5, and they'd have agreed to draw in the next two minutes. But Carlsen tried too hard, and he lost. And the interesting thing isn't really... You can look at a table base. I did, as you'll see in a minute. But question is should Carson regret playing for a win I think he should because of the tournament position perhaps but in principle um, he makes so many points by pushing his luck that stopping doing so would be a mistake I think you just have to accept that if you are going to push your luck in the way that he does then there will be occasions on which things go wrong okay so now I'm going to show you the um, PGN. It's called column161.pgn. Could you imagine it? got four games in. It's got the Abdusatorov game. And I don't know. I've got some... I, I mean, I, I, I didn't bother to annotate up to here. So he could just have played Queen H5 like a sensible chap. Queen takes, Queen takes, Knight G3, check, draw, agreed. But he went F5. And it was just... He was pushing his luck, because in a minute, here he ended up playing knight g5 check, which is not a move you want to play. And suddenly he got this rather unpleasant ending. Definitely unpleasant ending. I mean, you know, the, the, the table bases say it's a draw, but so what? They played on, they played some moves. Sorry, I haven't, I'm not bothering. Lots of checks. White got the pawn to the seventh rank. And here... Um, it's obviously very uncomfortable at this point. King a2 was actually the losing move, apparently. Uh, King 
to b2 or a4 sorry i probably ought to correct that actually because i've got king a b2 it's a bit odd should be king b2 um and i gave some table based stuff which went this was one variation And once you've got to the eighth rank, then obviously you're going to win because, because there are not going to be any mates and the two queens control too many squares. That was one line. And the other line went... Um, what's the other line? Queen to here, check. And white hides the king on h1 and later wins. That's another way to win. Okay, so what actually happened, Carson could apparently have drawn at this point, without a few seconds, it's not important. And Queen D4 check happened. So, that, so as I said, the interesting question is not the specifics of the Queen ending, interesting though they may be, but um, the question of should you take risks. Carson didn't against Nippon this year in the World Championship, or tried not to, because obviously Nippo is a man who's good at catching the ball when it's bowled at him. Um, or you know when a catch is, is doldied up to him um, using a cricket analogy and um, here he thought he should he was already half point ahead before this game so I think it was a mistake really to do it then I said here let's have some games from Hastings so maybe look away for a second and I'll get you a diagram I'll get you a diagram here and this is White's just played Queen takes c7 what should black play in this position? And the answer, the very beautiful answer, is that. King takes queen, bishop f1 mate, king to other squares, queen f1 mate. This is Ulf Anderson. I said, you know, Ulf's a great player, really nice man. I'm not giving two losses of his, because against him, it's just it's unusual he lost. And it's also, um, they're rather iconic games. This is quite a pretty thing, Bill Hartson beating him. And there's a famous game which I've given before, Basman Black. I'm going to turn it round. Poor Ulf. Uh, Basman, after, at about move 20, he realised he was in deep trouble. So he started doing nothing. And he had the stubbornness just to do nothing. So, all right, I'm going to move my pieces. Poor Ulf. Played G4. I mean, it's good for White for a long time, of course. But, I mean, he just couldn't bear not to eventually. I mean, making all push pawns two squares up the board is quite extraordinary. So he's got him to play f5, which is quite nice. Makes it harder to play h4 and a g5, I suppose. And now Basman starts to play very decently. And the awful thing is that in a few moves' time... Black was better, or he was certainly at least equal. Uh, I'm not sure. I did, as I said, give give it in an agony column a while ago, and I dubbed it the immortal, and I used a swear word game. It was rather splendid. I think for a long time it's just about playable, this position. I don't know if he could have played uh, h5 here. Um... Could he have played h5 in this position? Would have kept his kingside intact. And this is probably okay for white still. Because with the pawns properly intact, it's not such, such a dangerous position. It's not very pretty, but it's alright. You can survive this. So poor Ulf was completely discombobulated. And suddenly Basman st starts to use his pieces like a normal chess player and this is in some ways a terrific game i believe actually even here that pawn takes queen takes and some some trick actually holds but i mean you know you're not going to hold in practice not after the way the game's gone poor chap i'd be livid if i lost like this but i mean you know 
it was a brilliant piece of chess. I mean, Basman, over the years, he's beaten me both with um, one e4 g5 and with one e4 a6 as black. I mean, I've beaten him several times as well. But he is, or was, I mean, he doesn't play so much now, a very, very strong player who didn't play proper openings, partly because he hated being attacked. And if you put your king on a normal square, he did play a proper opening here, but he just got outplayed and then sat and took it. So that's an iconic game. And then I thought, apparently, I think I've played 230 games, something games, in Hastings in the Premier, which is just absurd. Presumably it's about 20 years of my life or something. Uh, fewer than that. They, they started as 15 round tournaments and then became 13. So probably 15 into 230 is 15, isn't it? Or 225 is 15 squared. And so it would have been, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 times I played in Hastings. I was first equal once with, um, in fact, was I first in tiebreak with um, the Swedish guy, um, Carlsen, one of the Carlsons. Sorry, I've lost his, is he Lars Carlsen? And um, most I did okay. And perhaps the most memorable game of all is this one, which again, I pilfered my notes from myself. This is um, a game where I played an extraordinary move. And I explained, it's in my book, um, this is a known line. So white's got the two bishops, but black's got a pretty good position apart from that. I don't know if a bishop g5 is a good move or not, who knows. Somewhere around about here I offered a draw, which is a bit mad, but I thought, I, I thought I got this feeling I was about to do something crazy, uh, or I could see I might do. And I wanted to have um, cleared myself of the thought when the game went mad that I could just have made a draw by asking him. Anyway, he very reasonably refused Lev Psachis. And here I played this move, which is probably not a great move. And then by the time I'd done this, I took nine minutes over night before apparently. I've got the clock times in my book. And I played knight a2, which is insane, really. Uh, and, okay, it's not totally mad, but it's not great either. Um, there are There is a way to refute it, I believe. Um, the way to refute it, knight d4. If knight e5, rook... is a disaster, because you've got a bishop b6 check coming. That's one thing that could go wrong. Uh, so in knight d4 anyway. And there is a refutation. What's the refutation from Joel Benjamin? It goes rook a rook to here. Goes rook a1 to there, rook to there. Check. King f7, f4. B1, rook e3, and that's complete refutation unfortunately. Well tough, I mean you know if you're going to sacrifice a piece like that it's not amazing that there's something wrong with it is it? Anyway it didn't happen, I got away with it, um, somebody's saying just 24 I think saying happy new year is it? Probably you can't see because it's where my fizzog is. there. Rotate, take, take, check here, here. And okay, you, if you take on b3 you have to play um, a, a piece down. You've still got three cross pawns, but you're at least equal if you just play chess and you've got really good pieces. Um, what happened was I won the exchange but even then, because my knight's trapped on d1, this is about equal actually. And I thought bishop b5 was a good move, but actually then rook h6. I discovered this later. 
is strong. Um, bishop d3 is okay. I thought I thought of you can go takes takes bishop d3 as well. Uh, but he went bishop d3 at once. Takes 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 take rook to there. You can't play rook takes knight of course because of f3 check. So I've sort of got away with my stuff. And actually I'm pulled up at this stage, aren't I? And somewhere around about here, he had very little time, unsurprisingly, poor chap, after the nonsense I'd subjected him to, and he went check, which is a mistake. He should go uh, take, take, check here. But I mean, well, F3 check is very strong, I think. This is a pretty good position. Uh, I mean, I think the engine in a little while says, oh, it's winning. But it, obviously it's good for black. Uh, anyway, he went with g7 check, king to there. Now he can't take the knight, of course. And if rook takes h7, I just play f3 check and win his bishop. So, And he resigned. Did I, did, did I give rook takes h7? f3 check, I did. So that was a pretty mad game. And um, what can you say? I mean, it's crazy what I got away with, on the other hand. Um, I took the risk and I escaped. And, you know, I'm proud of this game. Not because it's sound. I don't care that much about soundness, actually. But because I was inventive and fought very hard and did something few other people on the planet would have done. Okay, so Happy New Year to everybody. I'll be back on January. Uh, I mean, I, I'm actually on the first today. I'm recording this on New Year's Day. Colin, of course, goes out on the second. I'll be back on January the 16th. Uh, and I asked you, I gave us the game of the year, game six of the World Championship, not because it's such a great game in itself, but just because it was so important. But if you would got other games of the year that you would like me to show next time, then please, please tell me, send me an email or say, in, say in, uh, I think you've, my email appears somewhere. It's jonathan at jspielman.co.uk or put something in the comments and I'll um, see what happens. Okay, right. This is... Um, is still recording I hope because if it's not I'm going to scream and it is but now it is